Hey guys, hope you're doing great. Pastor Tim here, and this is our first video in our new Bible study we're doing, Avoiding Confusion. In this series, we're going to cover a lot of prevalent topics that we face in the world today, all right? And hopefully, we'll be able to give you the biblical response and the biblical understanding of what what Christians believe or should believe about these certain topics. I know it can become confusing, and that's the thing we want to obviously avoid, all right? The world has many varying opinions of how things should be done or what they think of certain issues. But if we listen to all the different voices we hear out in the world today, we're going to be confused. All right. And that's why it's important to build our thinking, the way we act, the way we react, the way we think about certain things on the foundation of God's word. In fact, that is what we're going to talk about today. Our first uh, subject or our first lesson uh, in our Bible series is going to be about the cornerstone of life. We're going to talk about what is a cornerstone. But first, we're going to read our, a text verse from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 through 22. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. There are many relevant issues that are at the forefront of the world today. The conflicting ideas surrounding these topics can easily cause confusion, but one thing that immediately becomes clear in discussions over significant topics is that the worldview with which one approaches any issue shapes how he or she sees available information related to that issue. Your, your worldview is very important. Um, so consider, for example, you know, you may not know it, but Pastor Tim wears contacts, okay? Without my contacts, I can't really see anything in the world clearly, all right? But to correct that, if I didn't have contacts, I would have to wear glasses, okay? Now, some of you guys may have all of a sudden decided that Pastor Tim looks a whole lot smarter than he ever has before and and that's rude. Uh, but anyway, without the glasses, the way I see things and the way I perceive things will be much different than if I was wearing glasses. All right. Without them, everything seems blurry. Without them, uh, I can't tell that, you know, there's leaves on the trees. I can't tell what teams are playing in a football game and so forth because it's not clear. But because that's the only way I can see, that's the only way I can perceive that information. I just see blurs, all right? That's all that I think's on the screen. That's all that I think's uh, in the trees. But once I put the glasses on, everything becomes clearer, all right? And what we need to understand, you've heard me talk about this before, is that one's worldview is very important to how they perceive the things around them, to how they understand the facts that are presented to them as well. So considering that, if you were presented with a topic, a social issue, so to speak, depending on your worldview is going to depend is going to affect how you think and how you believe about that certain topic is it going to be from a biblical perspective a biblical worldview or is it going to be from a human perspective a human worldview absent of god and that's the thing we want to think how god thinks and that's going to be the point of this whole series we want to look at the things of this world from God's point of view and understand it the way the Bible shows us in his word. Now, I want us to think of one's worldview as their foundation and specifically the cornerstone of the foundation. That's what we read in our text verse. Christ is the chief cornerstone. In New Testament times, the cornerstone was the foundation stone that was laid first and against which the rest of the foundation was laid. All right. So it was the first thing they put down and everything else coming out from it was based off of this one cornerstone. All right, so something to keep in mind, if the cornerstone is off, if the cornerstone is wrong, if the cornerstone is crooked, rest of the building is gonna be off and crooked as well. However, when Jesus is your cornerstone, life fits together the way God intended. You'll see issues differently than the world does because you begin with the foundational truths of God's word. All right, let's look at this for example. I, I'm going to bring up a chart here. With a biblical understanding or a biblical worldview, let's call that God's view, you're going to have a far different view of things, say, if you did not have a biblical view. We'll call that the secular view. You can see just on this chart really quickly, God's view says we need to glorify God. 
The world glorifies self. God's view means we want to live to be holy like our Father. The world's view, we only want to live to make ourselves happy. God's view has absolute truth. We're founded on the, the word of God. The, the worldview, the secular view, it's all about relativism. All right. Now, that's a, something that we're going to talk about uh, probably in great length throughout this series. But everything is relative. Relativism is very much a source of a lot of confusion you'll see in the world today. God's view says that emotion is a byproduct. But the secular view says that emotion is foundational. So if you're mad, you need to act out in that anger. Uh, if something makes you feel good, you need to pursue that with all your might, even if those things lead to sin. God's view, we have personal sin. It's a secular view. It's everyone else's fault, not our own. God's view, we need forgiveness. Man's view, man is the best, all right? Man is his own God. And in God's view, we see repentance. In the secular view, all right, with a secular understanding without God, we just tolerate everything. doesn't matter how you choose to live. If that's the way you feel good, if that's your truth, then that's fine. We tolerate everything, including sin. Now, moving on, we see that one shift in worldview, whether from God or the world, can even affect the church as well. We see a great decline in church attendance because people, churches, to become more relatable, are compromising their values and truths because they don't quite jive with what the rest of the world says to be right and true. And because of that, they slide into this relativism and therefore some people decide to leave the church because what am I learning? How is it any different from the world around me? So how can we avoid this slide into relativism? How can we avoid compromising our beliefs just to be more relatable to the world? Well, we have to found ourselves on the truths of God and his word, all right? We have to found ourselves on the absolute truth of Christ as our cornerstone in which we build the rest of our lives out of. For many people, even professing Christians, Jesus is simply a convenience of life, all right? He's the genie in the bottle to give me the things that I pray for. He's not their cornerstone. He's not the one that they're building their lives upon. He's not the one that they're seeking to follow. It's just something they do on Sundays. And I hope that's not the case for you guys today. So in today's lesson, let's look at three aspects of Christ as our cornerstone and how it's a reliable thing we can build our lives upon, the reliability of the cornerstone. Now, a cornerstone, like I said, is the first piece of any structure, and it must be carefully set so that everything else can be laid against it. All right, the rest of the walls, the rest of the next floor above that, if the cornerstone is off, everything else will be off. And if the foundation that you're building upon is weak and off, everything else in your life is going to feel weak and off as well. All right, so why must the cornerstone be reliable? Well, the first thing is it needs to be reliable for identity. The cornerstone of the Christian faith is Jesus Christ. All right, the foundational truth of Christianity is that Jesus Christ in the flesh came and died on a cross for our sins, was buried and raised again three days later. All right. That's the foundation of our belief and what and why we live our lives for Christ. The church, as well, is fitly joined together with Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 says this, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. Christ must be the cornerstone of every church, the standard by which everything is measured, for we find our identity in him. If the church is building its identity on something other than Christ it won't take very long for it not to look like a church. And if the Christian is building his identity on anything other than Christ, it's not going to take very long for other people to see you're no different than the rest of the world as well. Cornerstone is reliable not just for identity, but for unity as well. With Jesus as the cornerstone of the church, Christians are the other stones that build the spiritual house of God. All right. And for any church to function well, it needs unity, all right? And the only way Christians can have unity with one another, the only way that the church can work in unity is that it builds itself on the right cornerstone, on the right foundation. If, if Christians are coming in and they're seeking to build up their own selves in the church, if they're seeking to build up their own reputation, it's going to cause conflict. It's going to cause disunity in the church, not unity. Additionally, when we are rightly connected to Christ as our cornerstone, we will also be rightly connected to other Christians in our church family. Ephesians chapter 4 says that we are fitly joined together as a church. 
all right? But if we're not building on the correct foundation, if we're not building on the correct cornerstone, that won't be the case. And thirdly, the cornerstone is reliable for direction. Remember, if the cornerstone is crooked, then everything else will be crooked. If it's off, everything else is off. With Christ as the cornerstone, the church and the Christian's direction is laid out properly, all right? And we find this proper direction in God's word. That's what we're building upon. But if we're not building upon the correct foundation, we can go any which way. The Bible talks about uh, people that are following the philosophy of this world. They're like a, a, a leaf that is blown to and fro. It's like the wind, the waves of the sea is just back and forth. But a Christian who builds his life upon the, the truth of God's word is going to go in a steady right direction for their life. And it's the same for the church as well. We have to build upon the reliable cornerstone, which is Jesus Christ. Secondly, we're going to look at the revelation of the cornerstone. The first point being the identity of the foundation. What is it that we're building upon? Yes, we know Christ is the cornerstone, but where should we go to build up this foundation? When Christ built the New Testament church, he chose to use the apostles and prophets as the foundation. We see that in verse 20 of our text. He built it upon the apostles and prophets. Now, what that is in reference to is this. The prophets, they're the Old Testament. That's, th th those are the men that God used to write the Old Testament. The apostles are the men that Christ used to write much of the New Testament, all right? And what he's pretty much saying is, hey, when I'm talking about the apostles and the prophets, what, what you need to build the church upon, he's saying you need to build upon the foundation of God's word. Secondly, we see the identity of the cornerstone, which if you've been paying attention this whole lesson, we know to be Jesus Christ. But understand, this isn't a new thing in the Bible. Christ's identity as our cornerstone was even prophesied back in the Old Testament as well. Isaiah 28, 16 says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. We see this not only prophesied in the book of Isaiah, but also in other books of the Old Testament as well, just to further cement the fact that Christ is the cornerstone, all right? It was prophesied in the Old Testament. It was put forth in the New Testament, and it should be true in our lives today as well. Lastly, let's look at the rejection of the cornerstone. We see that Christ is who we are supposed to build our lives upon, but we also see in our world today that Christ is rejected all around us. People don't want to live their lives according to God's word. People don't want to build their lives upon the truth of who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for us. They reject the cornerstone. And we see that in the Bible as well. In fact, first of all, we see that Christ has been rejected in history. Back in the time of Noah, when he built the ark, you know, he didn't do that in like a day. It took him a hundred years. And throughout that hundred years, he was preaching to the people around him, say, hey, there's coming judgment. Repent of your sins and you can be saved. Come and you'll be able to come into the ark with me. There's going to come a flood. And they just laughed at him. They rejected him. They didn't want anything to do with him. Fast forward, you see that in the time of Moses, all the way through the kings and so forth. And in the Old Testament, Israel, although they were God's people, constantly rejected God and turned to idol worship, constantly refused to obey the prophets or listen to them and went into idol worship and it eventually led uh, to their downfall. And then we see, and this that's where we get into like the books of Daniel and the minor prophets and so forth, where they've been defeated by these enemy nations. And then of course, go on into the New Testament when Christ himself was here on earth and he was rejected by his own people as well. We see with the Pharisees and ultimately at his crucifixion when they said, crucify him and give us Barabbas instead. Christ has been rejected all throughout history. So even we see in the history of the Bible and all throughout the history since the Bible uh, has been written, all right, Christ has been rejected. And of course, that means, secondly, that he has been rejected in our day as well. Daily, people in our world reject Jesus and turn from the re revealed truth of God to some other God, which means that they have to create their own God instead. If they're going to reject Jehovah God, God Almighty, they have to create other gods unto themselves, whether that be money, whether that be career, or in most cases, it's themselves. And because man has rejected God and put themselves up in the place of God, it's the reason why we see many of the chaotic things just to be 
clear that we see in the world today. Just the confusion and just when you take a, sit, a step back and just look around like, why are things the way they are? It's because man has put himself above God. The, create, the creature has made himself like the creator. In conclusion, I just want to bring up a short story that many of you guys know from the Bible, all right? And it comes in Matthew chapter 7, all right? And it's about the wise man that built his house upon the rock and the foolish man that built his house upon the sand. One of them was building their lives upon a firm foundation, the other one not so much. And when the storms came and the winds blew and the waves rised up, one house stood and the other house fell down. Of course, you know which one it was. The wise man was the one who built it upon the rock. The foolish man was the one who built it upon the sand, and he was the one that lost his house. Many people in the world today, even professing Christians, are building upon the wrong foundation. They're not building upon the rock of God's word, of his truth. They're building it upon the sand, the ever-shifting sands of man's opinions, man's philosophies, and so forth. And eventually, it's going to lead to destruction. In the coming weeks, we'll discover some specific topics that are current to today's discussions. All right, the presence of evil, social justice, the role of marriage, the significance of gender, and more. And we will establish the biblical position on these topics and understand that blindly accepting the world's philosophies will lead to confusion. And that's the thing we want to avoid. All right, so I leave you with this one question with this week's lesson. Is your worldview founded on Christ or the relativism of this world? Are you looking at the things the way Christ does? Are you looking at the way your social media influencers tell you to look at it? Are you looking at the way your fa your favorite celebrity tells you to look at it or your favorite TV show? One is shifting sand. The other is a firm rock upon which we can build our lives. All right, guys, that's the conclusion of lesson number one of our new Bible study. But I want to leave you guys with three discussion points that I would encourage you guys to talk about with one another, uh, whether it be at church or text or whatever it may be. And I also encourage you to discuss these things with your family as well. The purpose of these Bible studies is not just to do the daily devotion. It's not just to fill in the blanks when you listen to me talk, but it's to get you to talk about God's word as well and the questions you may have. So I'm going to bring forward three discussion points, and I encourage you to talk to somebody this week about these things. Discussion point number one. The day of our salvation is the day we, we receive identity with Christ. So when was that time for you? And what is one way you have seen God at work in your life since? Tell somebody. Tell somebody in youth group. Ask your parents about when they accepted Christ as their Savior. And maybe think about, hey, how has Christ worked in my life since then? Discussion point number two. Social media, television, and various types of entertainment are great influences in our culture. In what ways do these things form people's worldviews? All right, and how can a Christian guard against it? Now understand, that doesn't mean they can't have these things. So another question is, how can a Christian use their own social media to be an influence to others for Christ? Now whether or not you have social media or whether or not you're greatly involved in entertainment, understand these things do have an influence on you. So discuss with your parents, discuss with your friends. All right, how have you seen both positive and negative influences through entertainment or social media? And how are ways that you can use yours to be a positive impact and influence for Christ in our world today? And lastly, our third discussion point, have you heard people ridicule or reject the topics we will be covering in this series? Which ones are you most looking forward to hearing the Bible position on? All right. I've already put forward a couple talking about the roles of marriage, gender identity, things like that and so forth. You guys are very familiar with a lot of social issues and topics that are talked about. So I encourage you, talk to your parents about, hey, this is the stuff that I'm looking forward to in this series. Or even go further and ask your parents, what do you know to be the Bible position on these certain topics and just have a discussion with them? That's it for today's lesson. I hope you guys were able to fill in all the blanks that you needed to. Be faithful, do each devotional every day, and I'll see you next week.